Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at light emitting diodes, LEDs, under magnification using this microscope. Now in order to do that, I had to take 5 millimeter LEDs, yellow, red, and white, and I had to cut them pretty much in half just above the internal structure as you see there, the post and the anvil. Once I cut them, I took 1,500 grit sandpaper and I wet sanded it and then I took red rouge with a cloth wheel and polished them so I have good optical clarity while looking straight down at them using the microscope. Now, right here shows you how an LED works. It's a simple semiconductor. It's made up of two types of material that are bonded together as one. One side is an N-type and one side is a P-type. The N-type is the side that has the electrons that's connected to the negative side of your battery and the p-type is connected to the positive side of the battery. The p-type substrate has more or less little tiny holes in it and what happens when the positive is connected to this side and the negative is connected to this side there is a little tiny area between the two layers which is called a depletion zone and it acts like a barrier or a wall which prevents the electrons from jumping across to fill all these little holes in the p-type material allowing the current to flow so you get the electrons going from negative to positive and as we know current flows from negative to positive if you connect the battery wrong you put the positive to the n-type and the negative to the p-type what happens the area which is the depletion zone which would be like right here all right would become very wide, it would go to there. And by making this depletion zone wider, what happens, the electrons have a much larger barrier or a wall in the way in order to jump across this gap to fill these holes in the p-type substrate of the LED. Now when you put the positive in the right spot, what happens, you're positively charging this side, this side is negatively charged, and that depletion zone, which was just a thin line, disappears. Once the depletion zone is gone, and the electrons can easily flow across to the p-type side to fill all the little holes in it, current will then flow through the LED, and in the process, as the electrons jump across, depending on how wide of a gap they have to jump, a certain amount of light or photons is given off. The reason why light is given off is because when these electrons make that jump to the opposite side, energy is lost and that is given off as photons or light. Now what determines the colors of an LED are two things. The substrate that's used, they also add to it impurities or they call that doping. And the purpose of doping it or adding impurities is to enhance the colors that you're looking for. So the most important factor is the amount of gap that the electron has to jump across. If it's a bigger gap, more energy is going to be given off, and then you'll be looking at visible light. If it's a really big gap, you'll be looking at white or blue, and if it's a really, really small gap, it might just be infrared outside of the visible light range. So you have two factors which determine the color of an LED, and that's the energy given off by the electron, as well as the substrate material, what kind of impurities or doping is in that substrate. Now over here in this image, they're trying to show you how when the electron makes that jump across these bands, that's a band gap, when it does that, light is given off. Now if this gap was really small, if this line here was like right there, it might just give off infrared light because it's a very short gap, but if it's a very wide gap, it would give off possibly blue or white light. So this is the primary determining factor of the color of the LED is that gap and the energy that's given off when the electron makes the jump. And the secondary factor is the substrate material with whatever kind of impurities were added or doping to help enhance the desired color that they are looking for. So if they want a blue material or a white, they're going to add that phosphor or phosphorescent uh, coating inside the anvil like you'll see in a minute and if they want red or yellow or green 
they'll add other impurities to help bring out those colors that you're looking for. All right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn on my microscope and put in a yellow LED and we're going to take a look at it. If you're looking at the yellow LED now, you can see the anode wire coming down from the upper left hand corner, connecting to the substrate which is bonded to the center of the reflector on the anvil. The anvil is the big section in the middle with the reflector attached to it. And the upper left hand corner is the post where the anode wire comes over to the substrate which is bonded to the reflector. What we're going to do now is zoom in. I'm going to make it a little clearer so you can see where the wire actually attaches to the p-type material in the substrate. I'm just going to let it slowly focus through. You can see the bond right there. You can see that very small black square. That's the sandwiched p-type and n-type substrate. The end side is bonded to the reflector and the p-side is bonded to the anode wire. Let's go a little deeper down into the reflector. And you can see it's getting clearer and clearer as the top portion gets blurrier. As the upper portion goes out of focus, let's go a little deeper. And you can see the bottom of the reflector now is pretty clear. Let's go back out again. What I'm going to do now is put this back in focus on the p-type material at the bottom. That should be pretty good. I'm going to slowly increase the voltage. We're at 1.5. Alright, so at 1.62 you can see the LED is just barely trying to light up yellow. Now it's happening because we have the battery positive connected to the anode of the LED and the battery negative is connected to the cathode. The depletion zone which is located between the p-type material and the n-type material which acts like a barrier or a wall as the voltage increases with the positive on the p-type and the negative on the n-type what will happen that depletion zone located between the two layers will slowly start to disappear allowing the electrons on the n-type side to jump across to fill the holes in the p-type substrate as those electrons move across current begins to flow as those electrons are crossing over and it gives off light as soon as I increase the voltage what is going to happen the depletion zone which is located between the n-type and p-type layers is going to disappear allowing an easy transfer of those electrons to the p-type side to fill the holes in that material so let's increase the voltage that's 63 and we're up 70 Let me adjust a little bit here. So we're at 1.7 and I can turn it way up. And as you can see now, at 1.8 we're fairly bright. And I'll turn it back down. That's 166. Now when these LEDs are made, whether it's yellow, blue, green, red, or white, they choose a particular substrate which is going to help show those colors or enhance them much better. Now that little block that you're looking at is probably only about a half of a millimeter square. And when you look at LEDs of any color, with the exception of white and blue, you cannot tell what color they're going to emit just by looking at them. But if you look at a white or a blue LED, 
you can see when you look into the anvil where the reflector is that there's a phosphorescent light green color which is normally used on those LEDs. I'm going to show you that right now. All right, you're looking at the white LED now. If you look at the right side of the LED, the anvil, you will see the reflector is now filled with a phosphorescent material, unlike the other LED, which was just a small block of N and P type material. So when you look into the LEDs, you could tell pretty much if it's going to be a white or a blue if you do see this color phosphorescent material in there. Now the way they connected the wires on the white LED is very hard to see because you have that phosphorescent material there. But it's going to be the same exact setup. The left side with the post is your anode that goes to the P-type material. And the right side with the anvil with the reflector is your N-type side which is connected to the battery negative. So the electrons on the negative side can flow over to the positive side or the P-type side. Let me turn up the voltage. We're at 1.6. I think these come on around 2.4. Now that's 2.3. You can see it glowing in the center. Now it does appear that just like the yellow LED, there is a very small block of a N N-type and P-type material that's bonded together in the bottom of that reflector. The phosphorescent coating is poured over the top of that. That's at least what it appears, but it's very hard to tell. Let me turn up the light. Let me turn up the voltage a little higher. Yeah, if you look right in the middle, it looks like there is a square in the center shining through that phosphorescent material. We're at 2.4. 243. Pretty neat. What you're looking at are the electrons jumping across to the P-type material, filling the holes in that material. You're looking at the energy, which is the photons, that's given off when those electrons make that jump to the opposite side. Okay, now we're at 2.5. We've got a nice even glow here. Nice uniform glow. Let me move this up a hair. Now the wires you see there are extremely thin and they're embedded in the clear epoxy which is covering the anvil and the post. So the entire housing is in clear epoxy. Now let's go a little brighter. Now we're at 2.6 and I don't want to push it because it's going to be too much for the camera. And we're back to 2.2. 2.4. A little more magnification now. All right, let's turn the voltage up a hair. See if I can focus better. And it's back off a of hair. And that's it. That's your LEDs up close and personal. Now you know what the structures look like and how it works. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Post links to this video on other websites and blogs. And also check out my video playlists as well.